Hello, and thanks for joining me on Life and Surround. Today's topic is What is Atmos, Part 2. During Part 1 of What is Atmos, I examined the Atmos output for Abbey Road, because it was recently released in Atmos, and I thought it would be very cool to hear the Atmos speakers isolated so we could get a sense for what was put up there. So Atmos, what is it? Bottom line, it is a 3D sound reproduction technology. That means that a mixing engineer can place a sound or a musical part anywhere in your room, in theory. Rather than music simply coming from your front wall, as with mono or stereo, or all around you, as with quad or 5.1 or 7.1, an Atmos object or musical part can come from anywhere in the room, including above your head, behind you, and points sort of in between. Now, sounds can be placed around the room in quad or 5.1 or 7.1, so that's not unique to Atmos, but getting it up in your room utilizing that Z axis, if mono and stereo only exist on the X axis up in front of your room, and surround can pull sounds out into your room on the Y axis, then Atmos, DTSX, and RO3D get sounds up into the Z axis. That's one way of looking at things. Atmos takes into account where you've put your speakers, particularly if you run auto setup. It knows where your speakers are, it knows where the engineer intended to put musical parts, and it does its best to put those parts where they belong in your room. And it's a benefit of the 3D or object-based sound technologies. Again, Atmos, DTSX, and RO3D. So what do you need to play back Atmos? You can do like I have and run four height speakers mounted near the ceiling above a 7.1, in my case 7.2 system. You can also build Atmos over a 5.1 system. You can use up firing speakers, height speakers mounted near the ceiling, or even in ceiling speakers. You can even use a sound bar with some kind of Atmos up mixing technology and they're even trying to develop an Amazon Echo that'll work with Atmos material. Now with soundbars and echoes, good luck getting a meaningful Atmos experience out of that. I definitely recommend going with heights of some kind. You can use as few as two heights, and I believe you can use as many as like six or eight at home. At a certain point you'll run into the limitation of your AVR, which is an audio video receiver. And finally, you need enough amps to power all those speakers. Sometimes an AVR has all the amps or power channels that you need, and sometimes you may need to augment with additional amps. And there can be advantages to doing that anyway, like improved sound and the easy ability to isolate the Atmos speakers and things of that sort. And I just want to take a second to mention Homer Jow's, my friend Gary's FAQ that he built on Quadraphonic Quad it talks about Atmos in a lot of depth, and I'm going to link it below. So thank you, Gary. You did inspire this video to some extent, and your FAQ is superb. So let's talk about whether you should install Atmos. In my opinion, if your only goal is to hear albums in Atmos, the time may not quite be right for you. There are not that many albums in Atmos. I've done that previous video on some, and of course there's the Immersive Experience, uh, the new Kenny Wayne Shepherd, Abbey Road, but there are not that many. Where Atmos really has its greatest value at this time is for movies and other video programming like Netflix. Sprinkled around this room are some Atmos Easter eggs. So you can see the normal Blu-ray edition of the latest Fantastic Beasts, in some cases, standard Blu-rays do come with Atmos soundtracks. And then I've also been investing in some 4K discs, like Dumbo back there, because sometimes the 4K version of a movie is the only way to get the Atmos soundtrack. Now imagine when Dumbo is flying around your room, and he disappears off screen, and zooms around and then comes back onto screen later. With Atmos, you can actually tell where he's going to re-enter the screen because you can place him in your room because of the Atmos mix. It does work similarly with a normal surround mix like 5.1 or 7.1,
but Atmos just helps you place things even better. There are also movies like Gravity, Saving Private Ryan, Fury, and concerts like Metallica's Through the Never, which become a much more engaging and entertaining experience with the Atmos soundtrack. And as has been well covered recently, Abbey Road by the Beatles is awesome in Atmos. I happen to still prefer the 5.1 slightly, but the Atmos is a very cool experience and I am profoundly grateful that I get to enjoy it. And there are some people, uh, probably a majority of listeners so far, who prefer the Atmos to the 5.1. So Atmos for music is here. Companies such as Universal have announced that they intend to mix thousands of songs into Atmos. We're beginning to see more and more Atmos releases. Whether they really make full use of the technology or not is arguable. Like the Rolling Stones' recent Rock and Roll Circus, and very recently Sino the Times by Prince. The fact that a release has an Atmos mix is not a guarantee that it's going to absolutely blow you away. It does have limitations based on the source, for instance. But when an album is mixed from its multi-tracks into Atmos by someone who knows what they're doing, it can be an unparalleled, awesome experience. So I hope this video helps you understand a little better what Atmos is. I've been asked a lot about it in the last few weeks, so I wanted to make sure that I got some education out there. Hopefully this video was enjoyable. Don't forget, if you did enjoy it, give a thumbs up, leave some comments, share the video, subscribe. All interactions like that help the YouTube algorithm consider this channel important, and I definitely appreciate your support in my quest to get the love of surround music out there to more and more people. Thanks for joining me again, and until next time, live life in surround.